first thing I want to do, <laughs> first thing I want to do before we get started with the games, is uh, no, I will not take off my shirt. Uh, I want to get started. I want to get started by. Uh, I want to talk That's about. That's okay. I'll the... take off mine. Oh. Lord. <laughs> oh. Lord. I want to start out by talking about this because I saw this and there's I have words. I want the record to show that when Disney started, initially, yes, the new trilogy was an unga bunga, fumble bumble mess. We can all agree on that, right? I went in with preliminary butthurt because they kind of started out by lying to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Literally, the very, very first teaser trailer shows a scene from Kylo Ren that's not in episode seven. And it has him yeah. say a line that is also not in the movie mm -hmm. that heavily implied they were doing like a Revan resurrection arc because they went out of their way to make his design unambiguously just dollar tree revan <laughs> so i was like wow uh design's kind of shit but revan resurrection arc let's go <laughs> that was mm -hmm. my that was my thought when i saw that teaser at first for force awakens right uh -huh. and then i saw the movie and i'm like okay it's a, it's a seven out of ten but it's disney's literal first crack at the ip like i'll let a seven out of ten slide for their first crack at the ip because Star Wars used to be different from what everything Disney did was. It used to be right. like not not the weird, random, cookie cutter, corporatized, family friendly, offend nobody stuff. It didn't used to be that, so it wasn't hard to stand out. But when the episode seven came out, and I'm like, it felt very safe. That was my. That was the oh moment. yeah. I could, they I could, definitely played it safe. I could not find a better way to word it outside the theater. My brother saw episode eight in theaters and my brother used to be, he still kind of is, he'll make a lot of excuses for modern products, but he's not as bad as he used to be. He's matured a little bit, but back in the day, bro used to ride hype hard. He, there was a time for about a year and a half where he swore up and down that Star Wars Episode Eight was the best movie from Star Wars ever, and that ever no. would be. I'm not He's joking. Lie. I'm not Oof. joking. He used to think that. Eesh. We fly to Minnesota. Why? Because my dad's father passed away. So we fly over, we see his funeral, we hug, we talk, we shake hands, we say bye-bye, we're flying back. I'm depressed. I'm alone because i'm sitting on the plane by myself so i'm perusing their movies what do i see star wars the last jedi i thought hey i missed the window to see this in theaters i've never seen it i'm feeling down and out because my grandpa died i know what i'll do i'll cheer myself up with some star wars <laughs> visually speaking objectively it is the best looking Star Wars movie. Oh yeah. Visually, Visually it's beautiful. There's almost the story no, is trash. There's almost no flaws with the CGI. I can't think of another modern movie that can boast that with that extent of CGI and budget. It was insane. Mm -hmm. Gotta love how those movies turned into uh, J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson's personal dick measuring contest, didn't we? Literally every scene of Luke Skywalker in episode nine is saying, yeah, I don't know what was up in episode eight. That was, that was stupid. <laughs> like when she tries to burn the lightsaber in her shipwreck and she goes, a Jedi's weapon deserves more respect. And I'm like, he just got here and he's already shitting on the last movie. <laughs> He just, he's been here, mm -hmm. he's been on screen for three seconds, and he, and then he, he sits down, and she sits down, and she's like, I'm giving up, you, just like you did, you, you had, you had the right idea, he's like, no, I was wrong, and I'm like, Jay, J J JJ, stop, stop. <laughs> the movie goes out of its way to say that by killing him, he, she lets him into her body, so like, I would have probably given the movie props if the last scene was her, like, smiling maliciously with yellow eyes. Like, good God, that would have filled me with so much hype. <laughs> I would have been like, whoa, 
what kind of st what kind of walk back is this? The, the old lady goes, Ray who? Ray Skywalker? And then she turns around and goes, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the Mandalorian season one started, and I've already gone on record and said that the first episode of Mandalorian on its own is a hundred times better than the show collectively is. Had the entire you show die. had the entire show kept up the quality and hype of the first episode, I would be like singing its praises. Am I right? For some reason, somehow Palpatine, Palpatine returned. returned. I like how you guys are still hung what? up on episode nine when we're talking. Joe is still like he's gaslighting himself in a circle yeah. <laughs> about episode nine. <laughs> Actually, I don't even think I finished the most recent Mandalorian season. I think I'm like the on the last couple of episodes. You, of course you didn't. The last season was ass, and even the most diehard yeah. fans are admitting it. <laughs> yeah, the last season was kind of meh, but I still, as a whole, I love the Mandalorian. I think, you just love this, Pedro Pascal, my, don't this you? This is my violently you nuclear know. take. This is my <laughs> violently nuclear take that makes, uh, it's so pretty. That makes Disnoids hate me. Um, I think the biggest mistake was introducing Grogu. I Why? think I what? think I think giving him a baby fan service merchandise printing side character was a mistake. He should have been a Boba Fett, like a badass yeah. solo bounty hunter who went on journeys. The show yeah. should have I think cuz here's the thing. Watch that first episode. It's taking itself so intense and serious that you are just enraptured in every moment. And that energy is gone every time Grogu's on screen. Wait, let's. This trailer's only a minute forty-five. <sighs> you can go once the game starts. Right after you we're done. You're so fluent in Japanese. I swear to God. I'm Wyatt. sorry. Yes. It's a hundred mm -hmm. years before the fandom yeah. menace. Yeah. Way fandom, before fandom, fandom menace. Fandom. Phantom. <laughs> phantom menace. Yes. Yes, we know. We know. Do you, okay. Do you know the problem with that? No, but I imagine you're going to tell us. The one line. <laughs> there's one your yapping. line. And it's from, it, they had, Disney had one job. One thing they had to respect. And it's one line from uh, Jedi Master Ki Adi Mundi. Impossible. The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. That means for a okay. thousand years, we have neither seen nor heard from the Sith. The Jedi are yeah. under the impression that the Sith are extinct, yes. but this show mm -hmm. takes place one tenth of the time distance before Phantom Menace, which yes. means that every character we see in this trailer had better die, or get like mentally broken or amnesiaced or something. There is no, mm -hmm. there is no way anyone in this show can stay breathing by the end. Tell me what comes into your mind. I do like how they have the dude from Squid Game in the show. That's literally the only reason I'm gonna start watching it. Cause he what speaks dude really from good. Squid Game? The, the dude who's talking right now and teaching the children is the, is the main character from Squid Game. You didn't know oh, that? Really? Here, hold on, no, when we see him again, when we see him again, I'll show you. Him. I, I didn't get a good look at him. Hold on. Also, they have Trinity that, from the is Matrix. Is that Trinity? It's Trinity yeah, from the thought. Matrix. Oh, but yeah, yeah, she's, yeah. She's part of the thing I want to talk about, because when you see her fighting, she looks like she's fighting with a metal rod up her ass. Okay, we'll... I mean, I think she always looks like that, though. Yeah, see, her fighting is very stilted. Matrixy style. Do I do want to say, yes, it's cool that we're getting yellow lightsabers more prominently. I was annoyed that the only one that was owned by someone was Ray's. That really did bug me. So, mm -hmm. as good or bad as this show is, I'm just glad we're getting more yellow lightsaber rep. Because what what was the only, like, popular time there was one, Joe? Was it was it only in Force Unleashed? Yeah. It was only in the Force Unleashed is when we had any indications of uh, yellow lightsabers. And then, of course, you had the comic. The closest, the closest canon rep in, like, TV was the shows. Force Unleashed. In the TV shows, though, was in Clone Wars, where the Jedi, the Temple Guards, had mm. white, they had white yep. lightsabers, uh -huh. not yellow. So, but that was... It doesn't make sense. Also, I'm, I don't care how good What's or bad the character... all these fucking hairstyles? I don't care how good or bad the writing is, the, the costume design in this show is shit. 
you can't tell who anyone is and the hairstyles are awful what is this what is this spider-man 2 garbage that, that's literally miles morales, miles morales spider-man like 2 garbage over here Ugh. i see that hairstyle everywhere now i like see it's the guy from squid game no. oh. i don't remember i don't i don't remember what his I don't remember what his <laughs> actual name is. All I know is when they introduced it's this Chewbacca. Wookie, when, when they introduced no, this Wookie, Wookie, when they introduced this Wookie in the promotional art for the High Republic arc, um, it pissed me off because they introduced him with three names. I don't know if you guys know this. In the actual like pre-written lore from George Lucas, all Wookies culturally are only supposed to have one name: Chewbacca, uh? Tarful, Gunji. They all have one name. So when they're like, da 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 or whatever his three name name was, I was like, good job. You once again fail at the bare friggin' minimum, Disney. I don't like how they're showing Jedi in hand to hand combat. The whole point of Jedi is to like mediate battles with by subduing with the force or disarming and immobilizing with the lightsaber. You don't. I don't, yeah, whatever. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power and who is allowed to use it. That's the line that literally like pissed me off. Like I was really, really mad. I was like, Leslie Headland, what are you talking about? The Sith's whole deal is that they are like, their whole MO is the more of a piece of shit that I am, the stronger I get to be. That is what it means to be a Sith. Right? Mm-hmm. That's the whole that's the whole MO. That's the whole reason they created the rule of two, because thousands of years ago all Sith ever did was kill each other, so there was more dark side energy for them to pull from. Everything's coming out in June. Yep. June sixteenth. June six June sixteenth. House of the Dragon, good TV returns. Uh, Woo! I like how we immediately deviated to talking about anything other than this show. <laughs> I love how we did that. It is perfectly indicative. Yeah, of what that's we're talking great. About here. I'm taking my shower now. Trinity doesn't look yeah. like she's naturally fighting in the Matrix. It's because she's in a simulation, people. She's <laughs> in a fake reality fighting. Of course, it's not going to look real in the Matrix. This is supposed to be a living, breathing human fighting another living, breathing human. You can already tell this is going to be the most insufferable character in the show because they already gave her a line that just screams insufferability. Only, like, it's gonna be so cringe to say this, I don't care. Only an out-of-touch libtard would write that. Only, like, a, like a wannabe socialist ESG tallying loser would write something like that for this kind of universe. This is literally, like, uh... I just talked about this show recently. It's like uh, Has Been Hotel. You're pur you're mm -hmm. purveying your own. You're projecting your own like weird insecurities onto lore of something else, whether it works or not. You know. Mm -hmm. That that show deserves its own video. Once Casey finishes watching it, me and her are gonna record a whole video about it. So I'll just stop <laughs> talking about that now. Uh, but. It's yet, a, it's yet again another instance of insecure white Hollywood woman um, projecting their moral insecurities into their product and using a diverse character to mask the shitty writing. Because here's what I guarantee, Jamie. They've already done this with every product, product and project. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Reva all over again. This show is going to release... It's going to be dog shit, and they will use this woman to protect their show from criticism. This woman will mm -hmm. be the meat shield martyr that this show dies on. She will be the, the big shield to defend them as they die on that hill. Are you aware who Leslie Headland is? No. I will tell you. Um, Leslie Headland is Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant. Mm -hmm. Every woman, young, old, experienced, or inexperienced, that Harvey Weinstein used the mouth of as <laughs> was brought to him by her. Mm -hmm. 
Which is why, if you go and look at all of her interviews, every single one, when she's not sucking her own dick and talking about how great she is and how she put so much of herself into this project, mm -hmm. what she's also talking about is how gay she is. Uh, because she needs to draw any and all ESG points and attention to the one part of her that she can milk for pity points. Because if Hollywood, for the briefest of moments, chooses to look away from the fact that she allegedly also likes vagina, because she's in, she's bi, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if she's not able to keep Hollywood thoroughly distracted with that fact... Uh, they're going to turn around and go, hey, you played pimp for the biggest race, ra racist, rapist in all of Hollywood. Good job, Disney. Why don't, why don't, why don't you write another thank you note to the concentration camps while you're at it? You're on such a streak. Question. Have you ever seen my, my, uh, Obi-Wan reactions? Uh, I think I saw the fur... You you have more than one, right? It I, was I got I got I got four episodes deep, and then I finally said, "Screw it, I'm not going back." Literally, okay, literally one of my one of my uh, when I'm doing my fundraiser this Christmas, one of my uh, self self uh, torturing goals, like if we so, if we build up this much money, I'll do this. One of the my harm my self harm goals is I will finish Kenobi live on stream. <laughs> if we make this much money, I'm still writing it up. I'll make like a whole presentation video about what all is in the in the winnings and when it'll be and all that stuff. So that'll be fun. But anyways, um, yeah, I, as of right now, I only got like four or five episodes deep and I, I just finally was like, no. Did you? That ever... was the one the one Star Wars show that I have not finished. Wait, so you saw Andor? I love Andor. I did not know that. Everyone I talk to about Andor is like, I didn't want to watch it because there's no Jedi in it. Or I didn't want to watch it because there's no cameos. Uh, or I um, found it hello. super boring. I found it super Diego boring. Luna as Cassian Andor, nah, sign nah. me up. I'm more, I'm more, I'm way more invested in uh, Stellan Skarsgård Luthen. Are you kidding mm. me? Mm -hmm. I, I'm mm -hmm. keeping an eye out for the next time GameStop has a Star Wars Black Series figure of him. Because I want, I love that character so much. Actually, Rogue One is one of my favorite Star Wars movies. I loved. I mean, I know everybody dies at the end, but until, uh, until it, you, you were saying, you were until, saying, um, it's just it was one of I remember because we went and saw it in the theater, and I mean, we knew what the general premise was, but obviously, we have never dealt with any of these characters. I loved. Jin uh, Irso as a female main character. I thought she was awesome. Super realistic. I love Cassie and Andor. I always wanted to know more about his background. So when they announced the show, I was super excited. Because the Star Wars fandom is, by and large, a bunch of children who don't really have media literacy. A lot of them did not see it or finish seeing it because, oh, there's no Jedi. Or... Oh, there's no cameos, or I, 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 like it's a bunch of anything, any excuse to watch anything other than good content is the modern Star Wars mantra when it comes to consuming Star Wars. So people didn't like uh, Andor because it was too grounded. Mm -hmm. It was too basic. It focused on good writing, so naturally the Star Wars fandom, by and large, didn't like that. Um. And because of that, what would have been a roughly three, four season show got trimmed down to two seasons. So all we're getting is season two, which will come out in 2025, allegedly. That's the projected mm -hmm. prediction. I'm excited, though, because... I am, too. Tony Gilroy, the guy writing it, he has never... I, I think he's gone on record saying he doesn't watch star wars like he's not like a diehard fan he mm -hmm. just he just saw a job opportunity to write and create a show for disney like a big big corporation and said like a big big job let me at it and so what happened yeah. was they were gonna go on production and then COVID hit and mm -hmm. he said 
Oh, shoot, I'm locked in a house for four years? I guess I better redraft those scripts. And that's why that entire first season is, like, so airtight and perfect. Mm-hmm. Like... Because they let... He, he had time to be creative and go through everything instead of being pressured to put stuff out immediately like a lot of right, amazing writers are. And, and it just... It feels... It feels amazing. Because if you watch... I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm going to make you mad. I'm going to shit on Mandalorian. If you watch Mandalorian... Mm-hmm. or Book of Boba Fett, or even Kenobi, there are many shots on just these random sets that are supposed mm-hmm. to be other planets. They don't feel mm-hmm. real. They don't feel populated. And if they do, they don't feel, like, alive or genuine. You mm-hmm. watch Andor, you can see the cultures. You can see the world building. You can see the detail, the lifestyle, the depth in everything. Mm-hmm. And ev- every shot, every set, every character, even like people who are like inconsequential in the long run, you're like, dang, that person felt real. That felt like a human being or a, a being, I guess, in some cases. Y- you yeah. get my point. Um, they felt alive. It's just, oh, man. That was uh, the Acolyte. Looks like looks like hot garbage. And... Uh, I can't wait uh, to see it suck.